I'm Rachel from The Analytical Mommy, and today I want to share with you how you would take a design like this and add in some custom text that is going to cut along with the design as one piece. So the design I got from Creative Fabrica, if you're not um, familiar with Creative Fabrica, it's a really inexpensive membership site for getting tons of designs and fonts. And in fact, many of the things you're going to find on Etsy are on Creative Fabrica as well. And it costs about $5.99 a month, I believe. Um, and if you use my referral code that's in um, in the description or in the comments, you'll see that you can get 10 free downloads from that. So highly, highly recommend it. I downloaded this one from Creative Fabrica just to give you an example. And I'm going to be adding text to this and show you how to connect it. If you're familiar with Cricut Design Space, for example, we're gonna do the equivalent of adding the text and then welding it. But for those of you using the Glowforge, you'll notice that in the Glowforge app, there's no way to weld or combine text with your image. So if you were to do this in the Glowforge app, let's say, and add your text, it's gonna cut this out and then cut the text out and they won't be combined. So today I'm gonna show you how to combine them. First, let's check the design and just make sure that there aren't any extra pieces in it. Now it looks like this one, for example, has something that says text, but when you click on it, nothing shows. So let's delete that. When you click here, our ornament gets selected, so that's good. And then when you click on this one, it looks like our ornament gets selected. I've already tinkered with this one though. You can see nothing really happens. There's kind of this blank extra piece here. So let's delete that. We're not gonna need that. Let's put the ornament back in place. And if we look at the ornament, we just have that. Okay, so we're good to go. We've cleaned up the design. Now let's add our text. So to add our text, you're gonna come over here and click on the text tool. And we're just going to make a box for the text. And I forgot to mention this, I'm using Inkscape, which is a free software. It's a lot like Adobe Illustrator, but it's free, which I love. Um, when you download Inkscape, if you don't have it yet, your Inkscape may look a little less than mine because you can customize the look and feel of it, but it'll function exactly the same. All right, so now we've got a little text box. Let's just unclick there and let's add in a name. I'll put in my name. For something like this, doing all caps is great because then you can make sure that the top and the bottom is going to be attached to your ornament, but you don't have to. Just know that if you don't go with all caps, it could be a little bit weaker. All right, now we've got our text. Let's come over here on the right-hand side. This is where a lot of the magic happens. We're gonna click over here on the text panel. But if you don't have the text panel option over here already, then you can come up here, click on text, and then text and font, same thing will pop up. All right, now next let's pick a font. You can just click through here and pick about any font you might want. I'll just go with this one. I'm just picking something random for the purposes of this tutorial. And then you click on apply. So now we've changed the font. Next, you'll want to adjust your sizing. So there's a few ways you can do that. You can come over here to font size and pick some different font sizes or even type in a font size. The way I prefer to do it is to drag. So let's click on the cursor to get away from the font tool. And now we'll drag. So there's different ways you can do it. If you just start dragging, it's not gonna control the aspect ratio. If you hold down the control button and then drag, it locks the aspect ratio. So up to you, let's say your font, um, didn't kind of fit that size well, you might want to not lock the aspect ratio and play with it a little bit. So I'll just do that here as an example. And then pull that into place. Now what you wanna make sure you do is that you overlap a little bit. Let me zoom in so you can see that a little better. You're gonna to wanna to overlap your text with the actual image because you want them to be touching so that when we combine the pieces, they essentially um, wherever it overlaps is where they're going to be attached later. So let's make sure they're overlapped well. Click away and it looks visually like they are. So let's do one little check. You'll come up here to view and over here to view mode, go to outline. And now it's a little bit easier to see those lines. You can see it does look like they're at the very least touching or overlapping. I think that's probably good, but we'll. We'll know for sure in a moment. All right, now before we actually weld them, there's two steps we need to do. Um, first, let's make sure that they're centered. So select everything and then come over here to our align and distribute tool and click on center. Now, this is still a font, it's not an SVG. So if you actually were to import this into Design Space or into um, the Glowforge app, it's not going to actually read the text, it'll totally ignore it. 
when you're in this outline mode, you can kind of think of anything that looks like an outline as your SVG pieces and anything that's filled in naturally as your non-SVG. Of course, that can change if you're messing with your strokes and fill and all that, but for right now, it's kind of a good visual. So let's convert this to an SVG. And to do that, all you do is you click on this button here, go to path and then object to path. So let me just review real quick what we've done so far. We imported an SVG, added text, changed your font, changed your sizing, kind of got it where you wanted, and then convert it to an SVG by going to path and then object to path. And now you see how it's an outline like the rest of our ornament here. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that the different letters do in fact overlap with the lines at the top and the bottom, which is exactly what you want to see. And now we're going to actually combine it all together, similar to what would be welding in Design Space. So to do that, let's come over here to the Objects panel and look at what we've got to work with that we need to combine. So we have the ornament here, and we have, if you ungroup this, each letter of your text. When you're combining, or in this case, we're going to use union. So if you're welding or union functioning um, pieces together in Inkscape, there's one little catch that you have to remember, and that is that you can't do that by the grouping. So if I just grabbed everything like this, you can see it selects the group level. It's not selecting the individual pieces. So there's two ways around that. You can either select all the individual letters this way manually, or you can simply ungroup them. They don't need to be grouped. So let's, let's do that. Let's right click, ungroup, and now you can easily select everything and we can go ahead and actually combine all the pieces. So come up here to path and then choose union. This is similar to your welding function. And now you can see after we did that, you no longer see the individual letters. So the letters are now part of the shape. You can see that by looking over here and seeing that there's kind of no line in between that part of the A and the ornament. Same thing all the way on the top. You just want to check all of your letters. So let's say, I'm going to undo that for just a quick second. Let's say that the shape had not, of, let's say one of the letters. Let's say this one had been like this, or actually let's make it less obvious. Let's put it really close. And then let's do weld again. Do you see now how the L, there's that line in between the two? Wherever there's a line, it's going to cut. So the L at the top is not going to be connected to the shape. Now, if you undo that again, and I make this piece longer, select everything, path and union. Now you can see that line is no longer there. So definitely make sure that you're in the outline mode when you're doing this, and then you're checking that. And then you just go to file and save, and the standard is gonna save as an SVG. So you don't really have to do anything, just save and then import it into your Glowforge app or design space or whatever you need to use and you should be ready to go. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, um, leave a comment if you have any questions or comments, and share with anybody that you know who might find this helpful as well. If you have a Glowforge Aura, be sure to join my Glowforge group. The link will be um, in the description, and I will see you at the next video.